A new Axios report shows how communities of color are disproportionately victimized by environmental hazards and how they are far more likely to live in areas with heavy pollution. Russell Contreras co-wrote the piece with Andrew Friedman, and he is here to break it down for us. Russell, thanks for joining us. You know, often um, we hear about these stories when they're kind of big headlines. There's some sort of toxic spill somewhere and, and a neighborhood needs to be evacuated. But there are also sort of constant threats. Um, and I'm thinking about, you know, in Philadelphia, where, where I live, where there's still a constant issue with lead in paint, often uh, found in older houses, older houses where poor people rent. And, you know, seven-year-olds are showing up with lead in their system. And we all know that lead paint, you know, it, 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 it's not, it's, you can't use lead paint anymore, but it's still, you know, around in a lot of the cheaper housing. Um, can you explain what environmental racism is and how people of color are disproportionately affected by it in this country? Well, environmental racism is the process where we get pollution, <clears throat> we get environmental hazard that are, are disproportionately placed in areas where people of color live. You know, studies after studies show that communities of color are exposed to more air and water pollution, like lead poison, as you mentioned, but also toxic waste than affluent white neighborhoods. This is for a number of reasons. Uh, these, <laughs> the places where you set up polluted uh, businesses are in areas where often these populations are disregarded. I'm thinking of the Navajos who have uranium mines. I'm thinking of places in the south where they have what they call black snow when the sugar canes are burned and these black particles go in areas where predominantly black people live. So this is something that goes on for years. It's been going on. It's finally been acknowledged um, by the general public, including the Biden administration. But this runs the gamut, as you mentioned, from lead pipes to the water issue in Flint, Michigan, to of historic acts like the atomic bomb test in New Mexico. These tests, these pollutions, they did disproportionately affect people of color, whether they're African-American, Latino, or Native American. And we're finally having a discussion in the mainstream about the effects of what this causes. Hmm. So some examples you present in the article include the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. Um, what are some of the other cases that you came across? Because as Anne-Marie points out, Oftentimes, these are happening right underneath all of our noses, and we don't hear about them um, unless they rise to the level of national attention like Flint. And Flint, it took a long time before it became part of the public consciousness. Exactly. You know, every October, black residents in Glades, Florida, suffer through what I mentioned, black, so uh, black snow. This is the thick soot in the air that, uh, from the burning sugar canes nearby. And studies after studies show residents have high level of respiratory diseases and asthma. If you look at the hundreds of abandoned mines in the Navajo Nation in Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, we find that they polluted water supplies that caused harm to sheep and caused cancers. There are some cases where sheep were born um, having trouble to walk or born without eyes. And you have a number of Navajo residents who've developed rare forms of cancer. Now, I have to mention that uh, often they don't have health care or the access to health care to even realize what's going on. When this first happened, a lot of elder Navajos got sick. It is an omen to die in your home. So they often know they were dying and go off into the desert and die alone. you got the Hispanic residents. Mm. You know, the 1945 Trinity test, this is the world's first atomic bomb. It went off, and I talked to one individual who saw it. Um, Henry Herrera said he was outside when the bomb went off. The wind blew, is what the federal government said, uh, the, the toxic stuff, but it blew back. And he remembers that within hours, his whole house and his mother, who just washed clothes, the white clothes, it was all covered in ash and all kinds of toxic material. They didn't know it at the time. And all his mom would do is complain that she had to wash clothes over again. He vividly remembers. He's 87. But the people there in New Mexico, in Tula Rusa, New Mexico, and the Apache Reservation nearby Mescalero Apache, suffered years of cancer and have not been acknowledged to this day. Um, you know, you talked about the black snow. That, that's something that you can see. But your article also talks about the things that you can't see in the air, the fine particulates. Um, why are fine particulates the biggest and most unequal environmental killers in the U.S.? Well, there was a landmark study, uh, landmark study published in April in Science Advance found that black, Latino, Asian Americans have the highest levels 
of hazardous particular exposure of this hazardous particular material exposed than white Americans, with regardless of income. This is due to the proximity to industry and construction sites and the associated emissions from cars and diesel trucks. This is according to researchers. Overall, this pollution causes up to $200,000 or 200,000 excess deaths annually in the research, uh, annually in the, in the United States, the research found. I was in El Paso, Texas recently, and I talked to people of Segundo Barrio. And one of the residents there told me that the problem, I'm located by the bridge that goes off into Mexico and, and the um, diesel trucks that come across the U.S. That gas, that exposure, because there's different emission standards in Mexico and in the U.S., that gas, though, exposure is Segundo Barrio, which is more than uh, 95 percent Latino, gets into people's system, and you have a number of kids who have asthma and other respiratory diseases. This is right there on the border. Um, very little is discussed about it. The fight, people are finally acknowledging, debated. But th these are things that go on throughout the United States. All right, Russell, always great to have you, my friend. Really important story there. Um, and I think that a lot of people, yeah. you know, hopefully a lot of people will read it because I, I think that, you know, one of the things that we've always talked about is how these things are just sort of happening in our neighborhoods, um, in our cities. Uh, and very often we are not that aware of them. So thank you for shining a spotlight on that. Yeah. And, and you know, we're glad, too. It. I mean, the other thing that we sort of haven't discussed and we know we're sort of running out of time is that when we're talking about poorer people, they don't have the option to just get up and move. That's right. Find a cleaner location. So it is, you know, important to clean up the neighborhoods where they live because there are very few options in terms of getting out of the way of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Russell, uh, thank you again, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you.